Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is 8th lecture of this Dynamic Programming Series Part 2 and this is Phase 3 of, D of DP lecture that we have been studying. So, what we have covered so now, so up, up uh, till now what we have done, we have created the get sum function which will return digit sum of all number up to n. That was our end goal. So, we are able to get digit sum up to digit n but the problem is that the complexity of this get sum function is actually exponential if you see uh, what we are doing we are assuming that if n has say l different uh, di if n is having l digits then at each place we are filling 10 different values so the total number of different combinations will uh, will be uh, 10 raised to power l which is exponential of course so the time complexity of the get function uh, get some function is actually exponential so the question is how we can reduce the time complexity of course if you have seen the first lecture where i have introduced dgtp we have said that in third lecture we will be uh, we'll be using uh, what we call it memoization sorry my memory is not that good we'll be using a uh, memoization to reduce the time complexity since we are using recursive dp so let's go and do that so if you remember till now what we have done we are reading the number p as a string and then in array ar we store we are storing all of the digits of input number because i need to have the knowledge of digit placed at each place or more specifically at each position that is why I'm reading it as a string and for each digit I'm placing it in in the AR array and then we are doing nothing just making 10 recursive call at each place or oh, sorry not 10 this time we are designing the limit as we have discussed already in the second lecture uh, in phase 2 lecture and then finally return the answer now let's apply mem memoization so for that what we'll do simply take an array uh this is long long it the the reason is because uh, the digit sum can be outside the range of integer that is why i'm taking long long it uh if you know about memoization in the recursive function if there are n parameters then the dp has n different dimensions now uh, we won't have this as dimension because this is common to all of the uh, recursive calls each time either this this or this will change but n will be same for each recursive call so you see n is same for each recursive call so what happens this is called the redundant uh, uh, state so uh, state variable so we do not need this we do not need to include this in our db uh, dimension so we only have one dimension for pos one dimension for sum one dimension for flag so the dp will have three dimensions so one for pause position can be as large as the number of digits because position is only going till n where n is number of digits so number of digits can be uh, let me show you the problem that we'll be submitting to test this whether our solution is correct or not and this is the uh, the problem for which we'll be submitting our current solution so as you can see b can be as large as 10 to the power 9 so there won't be more than 10 different digits right so position can be as large as 10 so just to be safe 11 now we do not need n but we need sum so if your number is having 10 digits what is the maximum sum uh, of a number can be the maximum sum uh, of a number can be up to 90 because if there are 10 digits each digit can be 9 so at max the sum is going to be 90 but just to be safe 100 finally flag flag can be either true or false so only 2 after that before going to make this recursive fall just initialize all of the elements of dp with minus one uh, size of dp so what minus one uh, will indicate that we haven't visited this state yet so if dp of pose sum and flag is not equal to minus one that means we have visited this state and if we have visited this state that means dp of some pose and flag uh, 
contains the result so we instead of going down and making recursive calls we will directly return from there otherwise if dp of some post flag is equals to minus one that means we haven't visited this state so this state needs to be calculated that is why we will calculate and just before returning we will actually save the result so that in future we can use it this is all i guess let's see whether we get any error or not okay no error at least okay so some up to digit two digit sum is three up to nine digit sum is 45 okay so it is fine, working fine now the the question that we are going to submit this code is uh, first of all let's see what we have done we have successfully implemented a uh, memoization so we have done nothing just created a dp array and save the state save the result of a state so that in future it can be used so this reduces the time complexity the complexity of a uh, of a of a recursive dp problem is this the size of the dp array so basically multiplication of pose sum and flag so this can take two different values so basically 2 into 100 into 11 so this will be your time complexity pose into sum into flag at the worst case case so you can see this is much better than exponential because 11 into 100 into 2 is much better than if you uh if your b contains 9 then 10 is for 9 so we have created this but we are able to get digit sum up to any number n but i want uh just a second come on but what i want i want the digit sum in the range a to b so that we can submit the solution here and we can see okay that the solution that we have been building is actually correct so for that we need to create as explained in the first lecture let me show you uh to get digit sum up from l to r result is actually digit sum of r minus digit sum of l minus 1 this is our result as explained in the first lecture of digit dp but the problem is uh, we are reading a and b if we read a so we are reading these numbers as a string and this is going to be a problem to uh, subtract one from a number which is uh, stored as a string for example if uh, the number is 100 it will be difficult for you to handle subtraction of one uh, from the number because the number is uh, now we are reading the number as a string so string is 100 when 100 is stored as a string subtracting one is a bit difficult so what we are going to do we are going to calculate digit sum of r minus digit sum of l but the problem is we we have subtracted l as well but we want to include l because we uh, we have removed l from the digit sum but we also want l to be present in the digit sum so what we will do we will write a digit sum function and include digit sum of l separately so what we are going to do we are going to calculate digit sum uh, digit sum r and digit sum l the result would be digit sum r minus digit sum l but since we don't want to uh, neglect the digit sum l because digit sum l uh, actually uh, contributes in our solution so what we will do we will add digit sum of l separately for that we will create a different function so let's do that so we are reading, uh, reading only let's do this okay so if you see in the problem there are t test cases and and in fact there are many test cases and the uh, if l and r are minus one uh, i think okay now should be visible uh, if l and r is equals to minus one that means we have to stop so we are reading a and b or basically l and r and now we will calculate oh come on let's rename this to a and b we are reading a and b now i want l and r let's calculate that so before that let's see a 
in the AR array, I am saving all of the digits of A. After that, initializing DP array to be minus one. After that, we are calculating L. Now, the same thing for R. Mm, yeah. For L. For R. Now, for R, we need B, of course. So, we'll save the digits of B into the AR array. Now, after doing that, again initializing DP array to be minus one because DP array may now uh, contain result from previous get some function. So, we need to initialize DP array to be minus one again. After that, calculating R since I've declared L and R already. So, okay. After that, not yes, here A dot size because we are storing the digits of A, then A dot size storing the digits of b b dot size finally the result is going to be result is going to be lli result is equals to r minus l but we need to include l uh, the digit sum of l as well so digit sum a see how result uh, digit sum function is simply uh, will take an argument string type and then return the sum of the digits in integer form. So digits sum string number and result is equals to zero for result plus equals to digit minus. Final return results. So I think we have taken care of everything. Yeah, one more thing. If a and b is equals to minus one, if a is equals to minus one, simply break. Okay, everything is fine. I think this should work if there are no more errors. Let's test it for this problem. from 1 to 1 to 10 sum is come out to be 46 which is good 100 to 777 sum is okay 8655 which is correct so let's submit this problem submit this solution to spot digit sum problem i don't think we should get a wrong answer for this let's hope for the best okay yeah you see so you see we are now able oh sorry we are now again <laughs> sorry we are now able to solve this problem uh digit c digit db problem there is one more problem uh here what we had b can be as large as 10 power 9 so the digits the number of digits in a number can be present as large as uh, at max 10 right so i've taken an array of size 11 just to be safe now there is also a problem i'll be putting the link into the description and also the link uh, uh, to this solution into the description and i will be uh, that problem will be as an exercise left as an exercise for you because that problem uh, uh i can't see that here that is the same problem but the number of digits in that problem can be as large as 10 power i mean uh there can be uh, a and b can be as large as 10 power 15 so that is a bit difficult you can think but all you have to do literally all you have to do take the same solution just change change this to this and that's all so i'll be leaving that as an exercise to you and this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and if you have any doubts or query of course you can ask in the comments or uh, not in the comment section i've created a uh, different uh article on the discuss.codechef.com so i'll be happy if you ask any question there so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you